welcome to the Nonconform 2.0 project. I'm here together with my colleagues, with Sarah Phillips, who is tuning in from Bloomington, and she is the director of the REEI and the Russian Studies Workshop at the Indiana University. Um, Sarah, do you want to say um, a few words? Sure, just want to say what a pleasure it is to meet all of you. Really looking forward to the project. This is the uh, third collaboration that the Russian Studies Workshop at Indiana University has with Anastasia and her team at the museum. And uh, we've really enjoyed working with her and now really enjoying working with Olga slash Helga. And um, just uh, really looking forward to seeing uh, how this uh, project uh, progresses, working with all of you and uh, learning more about your work. We've been uh, working on different activities to bring Russian and US art experts who have an interest in non-conformist art together. Last year, we uh, organized a project that was called Nonconform. That was like the first Nonconform project. And we had six artists uh, who undertook a virtual residency. Um, some of you, you might know, uh, like, for example, Evgeny Fix uh, was a part of this group and um, a few other artists. Um, and we asked them to create works that would help to rethink the <coughs> idea of non conformism So is non conformism possible today in the arts or in culture? When we started this project, the context was very, very different. We started it in 2021. So when we end, even 2020, when we ended it um, in August or in July this year, that was a different world. Uh, for the second part of the project, we wanted to kind of go a bit deeper and uh, uh, foster some kind of exchange between researchers and curators and let's call them writing people. Uh, so the outcome of this project will be uh, a publication with six articles, who, uh, uh, which, as we hope, will open up some new perspectives on researching unofficial arts and culture from a Soviet period. Writing has been a lot of different things. Mostly I write for my own practice. So it, it is my work in a certain sense, but I don't do writing for other people. I work on my own creative practices, um, like fiction and poetry. And, um, but I'm also an editor. And so my writing practice is a little bit expanded in that I work with other artists and I've worked with arts organizations and other small businesses to do editing work for academic papers or social media or stuff like that. So on top of my creative practice, I also have that like editor hat that I put on sometimes. As a writer, uh, I first started publishing in 1990 and I was writing about uh, cross-cultural uh, uh, collaboration and uh, I've done quite a bit of writing uh, for companies and in development of knowledge management and I'm quite interested in systems so uh, I would very much enjoy writing as part of my professional practice but also when I was um, in the UK, I was a graduate student at Goldsmiths, and I was invited to um, write for a art journal called Springer in Vienna. Uh, and I really enjoyed writing uh, about art and reviewing exhibitions. I was then invited by Art in America, which is an art magazine based in New York, uh, to write about Japanese contemporary art. Uh, when I was living in Japan, I was brought over to Japan in the uh, late 1990s as a Japan Ministry of Culture scholar. Then I uh, was invited by Flashart to be their international editor. Uh, I was flown out to Milan, but I decided at that time I was going to New York. I wasn't going to be based in Milan. 
And as a artist, I'm trained at St. Martin's and Goldsmiths, and, and I did my PhD in the UK as well. Um, I realized that the being an artist and writing about art were two different spaces. I uh, spent quite a bit of time to develop that muscle about writing about art and became more and more involved in art criticism. I always write at my desk. It's kind of funny. I feel like there's separate spaces that I work best at when I'm doing different kinds of things. So my desk is like sort of my little sanctuary. I have like plants and pictures that I like. And I have this like little figurine of a crocodile that somebody bought me. Um, I have this little timer that I like to use. So when I'm, when I'm working on stories, I really like to be at this desk, which also faces out and has these huge windows. Um, so it's like very bright and inviting. есть такой прекрасный текст, название которого я не помню. Все, что я помню из этого текста, это как он описывает писательский труд, про то, что это такой ужасный процесс, у тебя все болит, у тебя болит спина, просто встретить счет пот, ты такой весь, значит, непонятным, ну, какой-то очень непонятной деятельностью занят, физически сложный на самом деле, и такой очень, в каком-то смысле, олдскульный, потому что это такой труд, как бы не... Несмотря на то, что ты сидишь там за компьютером, а не за печатной машинкой, он все равно очень аналоговый такой труд. Какой-то из прошлой эпохи как будто. И вот я прям каждый раз, когда сажусь писать, чувствую, что это такое... Прямо сложное такое занятие какое-то, непростое. Именно физически. То есть вот надо там занять позу, сконцентрироваться и... И еще мне очень тяжело формулировать, вообще я терпеть не могу писать. <смех> Реально, каждый текст — это боль и страдания. Но как бы мне приходится себя разными ухищрениями, я себя заманиваю в эту ситуацию письма. Но это то, что касается каких-то более-менее исследовательских текстов. То есть есть, конечно, какие-то типы текстов, которые писать проще. Взаимосвязи между художниками, я думаю, что это вот началось с того наблюдения, что и в Советском Союзе, и в Нидерландах, когда были закрыты границы, происходили процессы схожие по своей визуальной составляющей. И вот такого рода параллели вот, меня интересуют. В моей научной э, сфере, в моих академических трудах как-то так сложилось, в том числе да, из-за синтеза разных э, моих творческих э, опытов, я решил, что я хочу э, и тему свою тоже посвятить синтезу, синтезу э, музыки и живописи, визуального и аудиального, и рассмотреть это на примере творчества э, первых абстракционистов. Конкретно меня заинтересовал Франтишек Кубка, э, такой чешский художник, э, который потом... Э, переехал во Францию, и вот как-то я все пытаюсь раскручивать эту тему. Но параллельно, поскольку, опять же, да, то есть профессия, она такая, ну, хоть мне всегда говорили сконцентрироваться, но вот моя какая-то такая ж, э, натура, она мне все время э, в широту э, разных интересов бросает. Но так сложилось, что тоже э, это локальные художественные процессы меня интересуют, уральские в прошлом, не так далеком, да, то есть это, собственно, андеграунд, и как из него потом вытекло современное искусство, ну и вот какие-то актуальные художественные практики, и 
работа с художниками. Кураторы разные. Мне, например, очень интересно и нравится общаться с авторами, ходить в мастерские, узнавать, как происходит творческое мышление и процессы каждого, потому что они все очень эм, различны. Usually, as an editor, you work with texts, and quite often, uh, what this virtual residency brought to the process for me was our Zoom meetings. Because usually, you, uh, strange as it is, usually I don't have that many contacts with the writer, uh, or uh, in the past. It was harder to, especially if people lived in a different city, in a different place, that would have been impossible, right, before Zoom. And now it's so easy to, you know, to meet and to talk um, in person. So that was actually good. Uh, and uh, also working uh, with texts, uh, but also having Zoom meetings with authors brings a lot, uh, I would say it turns, makes a relationship between the editor and the author less formal, strange as it is. Because if you just work with texts, you receive the text, you edit it, and you give it back to the publishing house or sometimes to the writer it's mostly to the publishing house and in the past when i edited some text i didn't even ever meet uh people who wrote those so this virtual residence is actually less uh, less formal more informal more lively and gives a chance to turn this editor author relationship into a more personal thing which is great Этот сборник, мне кажется, может даже какую-то новую новую струю э, перенести, потому что настолько разнообразный объемный материал и зачастую необычная подача, э, я думаю, он сразу должен обратить на себя внимание.